Hi, and welcome to Brimster Puzzles, and back to the next World Puzzle Federation pack. This is the 2015 pack, Round 7, and these packs were set by Italian puzzle creators back in 2015. So, um, of course, this will be another pack of puzzles that sums to 600 points, um, and I'm recording these way before you're, you're seeing these, um, like months before. Um, but the way that I've been told that the point system worked is you've got 90 minutes to solve puzzles worth 600 points, and any puzzles that you could complete, you would submit the answers and you would get the points for those completed puzzles. Most points wins. Now, World Champions, and you can go to the World Puzzle Federation website linked below, um, and you could go to their website and you would see that World Champions would be solving all 600 points in about an hour. So they would be getting about, what is that? That's about 10 points a minute. Um, but 10 points a minute is something that World Champions were doing. Most people who were solving the pack weren't getting all of the points, even in um, the, the 90 minutes, and I've been told that people would be aiming to try and get about 10 points, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, what was that, about 20 points a minute or something, no, no not 20 points a minute, uh, uh, 10 points every, well, five points a minute, get five points a minute, that's 10 points every two minutes, um, and that would be a pretty good run. So, for example, this puzzle, which is a classic Sudoku one, is a 20-point puzzle. So if you're a world champion, we'd want to be knocking this out in about two minutes. If you were wanting to be competitive, you'd be trying to knock it out in about four minutes or under four minutes. Um, I'm not going to be pushing for times. So I don't do that. But what I am going to try and do is explain the logic and the tools I use to solve Sudoku. This is the first puzzle in this particular series. So I'm going to be starting at the back again at the beginning, assuming that you know nothing. Um, and if you do, well, oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, how do these work? Um, in the descriptions below, I will provide links to this puzzle as well, as I've said, to the entire World Puzzle Federation archive, where you can download all of the packs they've released from 2014 up until today. Um, and yeah, I'm going to work through and explain the rules of the puzzle, and then I will go through and solve them. I won't go into the point detail again, apart from mentioning how many points each puzzle was worth. Now, this particular puzzle was set by a creator who went by the name of Non-Zero. Um, and as I said, this was created by Italian setters at the time. So really cool. Let's have a look at the rules of classic Sudoku 1. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. That's it. They're the rules. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer, though I'm not going to worry too much about time. So what can I see? We can see that sixes are already in columns four and five. So we can't put sixes in any of these cells. This six says we can't put a six here, so we can put a six into this cell right away. Now, that means six is limited to these three cells. Now, I'm going to explain how pencil marks work, but I'm not going to pencil mark here because there's no valid pencil mark for me to do with a classic just yet in those locations. Um, nine and nine is looking across saying nine is in one of those two. Now, I can don't need to pencil mark here, but I'm going to explain. I'm going to do it so I can explain what I would do um, because I can see that nine can't be here. But what I would normally do is pencil mark when a digit is restricted to two, uh, do a corner pencil mark like this. When um, a digit is restricted to two cells in one three by three box or one region, but in a classic Sudoku, normally a region is these three by three boxes. Um, and but what that means is if I can ever eliminate one of these nines, which I can in this situation, I can eliminate this one. The fact that I've only had two pencil marks and I removed one of them would mean that this had to be the nine and I could possibly continue with that. Now, I can actually do something else here. This 9 is looking up, saying I can't put 9 in any of those. This 9 is saying I can't put 9 in any of those. So 9 is in one of those two. Now, this does allow me to use the pencil mark trick, but it does something more. 9 can't go into any of those, and if I put 9 into either of those, it would mean I couldn't put 9 into any of these pencil marked cells, so I couldn't actually put 9 into this box. So 9 can't be here, and this is what's called pointing digits, because these two digits are lined up, and it means I can't put um, 9 into any of those cells without breaking this box. So 9 can't go into any of those cells. This 9 is looking up saying it can't be there, and I can actually pencil mark 9s here. Okay. 
Nine is looking down and I can do the same here. This nine is looking down. This nine is looking across. Nine is in one of those two. And then I can do the same. Nine is not here and here. Nine is not here. Nine is in one of those two. Okay. Now, I'm probably not solving incredibly efficiently, but what I'm trying to do is demonstrate the tools I'm using. And I'm about to get it because I can use these threes. This three says three is not in any of those. This three says three is not in any of those. So I get pointing threes pointing down. Oh uh, no, I thought, yeah, that does do it. So now in this box, I was looking ahead. And then when I went back to explain, I lost track of what I saw. I can't put three in those cells. And because of the pointing threes, I can't put three here. So this has to be the three. And I've just used the three to overwrite one of my nine pencil marks. So this has to be the nine. Looking up, removing nine from here and putting nine here. And I didn't need to reinvestigate or rediscover this nine because I, my pencil marks did that work for me. Eight has to go in one of these two. I'm going to tr try and speed up a little as I move through. And as I do future puzzles, I won't go through the basics quite as much. I can see one in this box is restricted. It can't go in any of those and it can't go there. So one is in one of those two. Three is in one of those two for the same reason. Uh... Eight is in here, but it could be in three. Like this is just a triple. Let's mark this triple. I've already got one. I haven't got a one in the column. I do have two and three. I don't have a four. So these are one, four, and eight. And I can't put one here. It's probably not the place to look. Three, probably not. Three. Hmm. Three is in one of those two, but this pointing three is looking down saying that's not the three, that's the three. So I've now got a triple in this row. Only th what that means is there's only three digits I haven't placed. So these are four, five, and eight, which are the digits I haven't placed. Now this can't be an eight. Okay. I always slow down and lose the flow when I'm explaining, but, or when I'm explaining in a lot of detail, but I think it's worth it for these first videos. Might be wrong. Um, or these puzzles are just harder than the previous months have been, or I'm just missing stuff. Right, four, where's one in this column? This is a hidden single. So I can ask, where can one go in this column? I can't put one here and I can't put one in any of those. This is the only place I can put one in the column. So now I can ask, where does one go in this box? This one is removing from those. The pointing ones are removing from those. That one is removing from there. One is in one of those. But now this is a one, three pair because one and three see those and one and three sees those. So the only place that both one and three can go is in those cells. That's a one, three pair. And this is now a triple as in there's only three digits that haven't been at least approximately placed. So these are four, six, and seven. And the six is looking across saying, that's not the six. This is the six. This is a four, seven. So this is a triple. So I haven't placed two, five, and eight. And there's already a two there. So this is a five or an eight. Two is in one of those two. And the two is looking up saying not there. So this is the two. The five is looking up saying that's the eight and that's the five. This is now a triple, which is three, five, six. And there's no six in either of those because of this six. So this is the six. The five is looking up, making that the three and that the five. The three is looking all the way back, making that the one and that the three. That means this isn't the one. I removed one pencil mark. This is the one. This is actually a triple now, which is seven, eight, nine. There's no nine in the middle. There's no eight on that end. And I can just use those pencil marks. These are the two and four that haven't been placed in either the row or the box. Um, so this is a triple, which is four, six, and seven. There's no six there. Where's one in this box now? I've got four ones looking into this box, which means there's own, um, it sees all of those, these cells. So this has to be the one. 
Uh, this isn't a five because of the five looking down. So what are these digits? They're three, four, seven, and eight. So three is in one of those two. So this is four, seven, or eight because they're the only digits. And that gives me a four, seven, eight triple. So four, seven, and eight has to go into those cells. If this was either a four or a seven, if four was here, this would become seven. These would be four, eight, but I just put a four here. So both of those would have to be eight. Basically, we've got three cells that can only contain three different digits. So I can't put any of those di three digits in a different cell. This becomes a six, and this is the five that can't go anywhere else in the box. So five, uh, not sure, but what are they? Are these four? No, this isn't the eight because of that eight. This is a four, seven pair. That's the eight. So what are these? These are two, four, and seven, and there's no two there. So this is the two. This is a four, seven. This is four, seven, eight. And this is all because of the column, and this is also not eight. The other way to look at that would have been where is eight in this column? This is the eight. This is not the eight, but the four, seven pair means this can't be a four or both of those are seven. That's the five. There's no five or eight here. That's the four, which has displaced an eight pencil mark, making that the eight. And this is the five that has not been placed in this box. So this is a four, seven for the column, but I've got a one, four, eight triple here. So that has to be the four that has to be, sorry, that has to be the seven, that has to be the four, that has to be the seven, and this is a triple. I haven't placed a two, a five, or a six, and there's a five and a six already in row four, so that's the two. These become five, six, not sure yet. The four, seven pair means that these are the two and nine that have not yet been placed in this box. Okay, this is a triple now. I haven't placed a two, a six, or an eight in this column, and there's already a two and a six in this row. So that's the eight. These are two and six. The two makes that the six and that the two. The six looks back making that the five and that the six. That looks across saying this isn't a six. I could have used the the um the uh I could have used the box for that. But the seven is looking across saying there's no seven there, but I need to put a seven in the box. So that has to be the seven, removing a three pencil mark, leaving that to be the four. There's no four here. There's no eight here. So these are one, four, eight. Not sure yet, but something will crop, something will come up. What is the triple I haven't placed in this box? One, four, and seven. So I need to put one, four, seven. This can't be a one. Don't think that's it. What haven't I put here? One, five, and eight. Well, I see a one and a five here. So this has to be eight, or I could have used the three looking across. That would have done it. This is the three. This is the one, meaning this is the four. This is the eight. The four looks across making that the seven, meaning this is the one. This isn't the one, but I can now just follow pencil marks. Seven means that's the nine. Nine means that's the seven. The nine looks down, making that the two, making that the nine. The two looks up, meaning that has to be the four. So this has to be the two. Um, there's something here. Ah, this four, of course, makes that the seven and that the four. Looking across, making that the seven and that the four. These digits are four and five, and I'll use the same four to make that the five and that the four. And that's the correct solution to the puzzle, which I very much did enjoy. Now, as I said, um, that was me going through in a lot of details, so my time was slow. I don't really care. Um, I just hope people were able to follow along. I will do less basic explaining of pencil marks and everything in the future, or at least in this pack. Um, uh, I'll do a little bit more as I try and come across new logic, but hopefully um, this was something that if you were new to Sudoku, this is a very, very basic classic Sudoku. If you are new, you can look at this and go, ah, that's how that works. If you do have questions, please feel free to leave comments below um, and I will try and explain and um, answer your questions in the comments and other people may be able to help you as well. If you do want to learn more about advanced classic Sudoku, check out a channel called Smart Hobbies, which does a very good job of explaining um, more advanced classic Sudoku. But I am going to work through the classic Sudoku in this pack and I'm not sure what I'm going to be in for. So some of the, um, the classic Sudoku in these packs can get quite tricky and I don't know what I'm in for yet. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of this pack. Good luck with your solving.